Let me just repeat. <coughs> so calculus two, lesson five, the volume of a solid of revolution using the disk method. So here's the simplest example of a solid of revolution. Take this rectangle. The rectangle has width w height r. If you take this rectangle and you rotate it around the x-axis, it sweeps out a disk. The width of the disk is still w. What is the cross section of this disk? It's a circle. It's a circle of radius r. And the area of that circle is pi r squared. So the volume of the disk is just the area of a cross section times the width, pi r squared w. And we generalize this. Suppose we have some function, y is, let's say, r of x from a to b. And let's say, to, for simplicity, that this is a non-negative function. You rotate this around the x-axis. It sweeps out a solid of revolution. At any point x, the cross section through this volume is a circle of radius r of x. So the cross section has area pi times r of x squared. If you integrate that from a to b, that is the volume. So the volume of this solid of revolution is the integral from a to b of pi r of x squared dx. And the first example, take the function square root of sine x from zero to pi. The graph of that function looks like that. When you rotate it around the x-axis, it sweeps out the solid. And the volume is pi, the integral from the left-hand endpoint to the right-hand endpoint, zero to pi, f of x squared. Square this, you get sine x. So this is pi integral from zero to pi sine x dx. The integral of the sine is minus the cosine. You evaluate it and you get the volume, which is two pi. Now let's look at a more subtle example. Here we take the function f of x equal to two minus x squared. What is that? That's a parabola. When x is zero, it's two. When x is plus or minus one, it's one. From minus one to one, This is the graph of the parabola. And now we want to rotate it around an axis, but in this case, we're not going to rotate it around the x-axis. We're going to choose as the axis of rotation, this is the horizontal line, y equals one. And we're going to rotate this around this line. And when we do, we get a figure, three-dimensional figure, that looks like that. <coughs> Again, every cross-section is a circle. And what is the radius of this cross-section? So at any point x, this is the radius of the circular cross-section. What is this height? Well, this is the function f of x equal two minus x squared. This is x comma two minus x squared. And this point is x comma one. And this is the radius of the circle that we get when we intersect this solid of revolution with a plane. What is the radius here? From here to here, that's two minus x squared but we went from here to here. So our radius r of x is just two minus x squared minus one, which is one minus x squared. 
When x is zero, the radius is one. When x is plus or minus one, the radius is zero. So the volume is the integral from minus one to one pi times the radius squared dx. How do we, sorry, radius squared, one minus x squared is squared. How do we compute this? Well, the simplest thing to do is just expand the polynomial when you square this. You get one minus two x squared plus x to the fourth dx. That's pi times x minus two thirds x cubed plus one fifth x to the fifth. When x is equal to one, you get one minus two thirds plus a fifth. And when you get x equal minus one, you get the negative of that. And when you subtract, that just means you get two of them. So we just have to do a little bit of arithmetic. This is two pi over the common denominator of 15, 15 minus 10 plus three, that's eight. So we get 16 pi over 15. And again, the subtlety here is we have this very simple curve, parabola two minus x squared, which we're rotating around a horizontal axis, but we're not choosing the x axis as the axis of rotation. We're choosing the line y equal one as the axis of rotation. Now, the next type of example of using the integral to compute a volume is what is sometimes called the washer method. So in this case, we take a rectangle, the width is W and so this line down here is the x-axis. And the distance from the x-axis to the top of the rectangle is capital R. The distance from the x-axis to the bottom of the rectangle is little case r. So in fact, the height of this rectangle is capital R minus little r. And, but what we're going to do is to take this rectangle, rotate it around the x-axis and it sweeps out, well, it looks like a disc with a hole in it, which is what is called a washer. Go to the hardware store, that's what a washer looks like. That's a washer. And we want to compute the volume. So the simplest way to look at this is, well, imagine you took this red rectangle rotated it around the x-axis, you would get a disc, I'll call it the red disc, whose volume would be the width times pi r squared, pi capital R squared. Suppose you take this green rectangle, you rotate it around the x-axis, you get a green disc whose volume would be the width times pi little r squared. And if you think of the washer as a big disc with a whole small disc in the center taken away or punched out, the volume would be the difference, this minus this. So the volume of the washer
would be pi w r squared minus pi w little r squared. Or pi big R minus little r squares w. And, <coughs> and that is the idea of what is called the washer method. When you take a region in the plane, rotate it around an axis, and you want to compute its volume. It's like if you take any cross section, it's like a disk with a hole in the center. That is a washer. So let me do an example to hopefully make this a little bit clearer. So I want to find the volume of the solid of revolution for the region bounded by these two curves, y equals the square root of x and y equals x squared for x between zero and one. So what do these curves look like? Zero, one, one. So y equals x squared is the parabola. And y equal the square root of x is this, is this curve. So we have this lovely region, and we're going to rotate it around the x-axis. So we get a kind of a cup. There's a hole in the center, but these are the, this is the cross section. So what is What is the cross-sectional area? So this is square root of x. This is x squared. So it's like in our This is capital R of x equal to the square root of x. This is little r of x equal x squared. The volume is equal to pi, the integral from zero to one, r of x squared minus little r of x squared. That's pi, the integral from zero to one, square root of x squared minus x squared squared. That's pi, the integral from zero to one, x minus x to the fourth. So that's equal to pi, a half x squared minus a fifth x to the fifth, evaluated from zero to one, which is pi times a half minus a fifth, which is, if you put it over 10, 5 tenths minus 2 tenths, 3 tenths pi. That's a nice example of the washer method. So let's look at one generalization of all of this. The idea is what made it possible to compute the volume of these solids of revolution was not so much the fact that they were obtained by rotating some region in the plane around an axis. It was the fact that for every x, we knew the cross-sectional area. So the general formula 
for the volume of a solid where the cross-sectional area is x, or a of x or a of y, you can either look and have the cross-sectional area with respect to the x-axis or the y-axis. The volume is, as x goes from a to b, is the integral from a to b of a of x dx. Or if you have a cross-sectional area with respect to the y-axis from c to d, the volume is the integral from c to d of a of y dy. So if you know the cross-sectional area of a solid, this formula will give you the volume. So here's a very beautiful example. Suppose we take a pyramid with a square base. So here is the base of the pyramid. And we're told that the area of the base is capital B. And there's a point above the center of the base at height H. And from that point, if you draw a line to each of the four sides of the square, and if you look at the solid region that's enclosed, that is a pyramid. And so the pyramid starts at height zero and goes up to height H. So with, re in the, with respect to the Y axis, Y is going from zero up to H. And in order to figure out what the volume is, we need to know for every Y, the area A of Y of a cross section. So A of Y is the area of the cross section at height y. And this cross section is a square. Okay. Now, how can we figure out what the area of that cross section is? Let's see. So, a square, of course, is determined by the length of any one of its sides. So if the base has area capital B, the side of the square is equal to the square root of capital B, which I'll call little b. And what happens to the side of the square as you go from height zero up to the top, h? You can actually kind of draw a graph of that. This is height above the ground, y. When y is equal to zero, the side of the square is b. And this decreases until you get to height h, and at height h, you're at the very apex of the pyramid, and the height is zero. So what is the equation of this line? And as y goes from zero to h, the height, goes from B down to zero. Well, in math 175, you certainly learned how to find the equation of a line passing through two points. This line is given by the equation, let's see, I'm not sure what I should call this. Um, I'll just call it maybe another, another, I'll call it Z, is the variable. So what is the slope of this line? The slope of this line is minus B over H times Y, and the intercept on the Z axis is B. So for any value of Y, so at any height Y above the floor, 
the cross-sectional area is a square, and this is its side. So what is the cross section at height so the cross section at height y is a square with the side of length minus b over h y plus b or I can write that just to rearrange this slightly. If I factor out a b over h, this is h minus y. Okay. b h over h is b minus b y over h. Yeah, that's the side. So the cross sectional area is this squared b squared over h squared, h minus y squared. So the volume of the pyramid, v is equal to the integral from zero to h of this cross-sectional area, a of y dy is the integral from zero to h, the b squared over h squared I can take out, h minus y squared dy. What is that equal to? Minus b squared over h equal to b squared over h squared. And when I integrate h minus y squared, I get h minus y cubed over three times minus one. So this is what I get evaluated from zero up to h. When h is equal to, when y is equal to h, you get zero. And when y is equal to zero, you get minus this, which is b squared over h squared. h cubed over three. What is that? That's one third little b squared was capital B, that was the area of the base we started with, times h. So that actually is a very beautiful result. Let's just take a look at this. Here's a square of base B. If we were to build the rectangle over that square, So the base is as area B and the height is H. So the volume of this box is B H. Well, we're not taking the box. What we're taking is the pyramid. And the volume of the pyramid is exactly one third the volume of the box. That's actually a very beautiful result. Anyway, so this is this is our introduction to volumes. You have a pyramid. The cross-sectional area A of Y is given by this. You integrate that you get a third capital B times H, which is a third. <coughs> a third, the volume of the box that contains the pyramid. Well, we'll have a lot of homework problems to learn this method. <laughs>